Good uh, evening or afternoon to YouTube, BookTube, and I, like I said in my last video, I'm all alone until next Wednesday, and it's a quiet day here in West Michigan by Lake Michigan. And uh, as I said, I have lots of books, used books that I have bought the last couple weeks. I haven't got some books today. I was thinking about showing all these used books. I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 20. There's 29 used books. Well, not all used. As I mentioned, uh, our oldest son, Caleb, he, him, his, Caleb and his wife, Emily, and our little granddaughters, Josephine and Cora Lee, gave Papa an Amazon gift card. And I used that to... Uh, buy some books from Amazon, which I I think one of them I haven't shown was this one. It's a used biography of Bertrand Russell, the philosopher, by Caroline Moorhead. Uh, yeah, I've always been interested in uh, Bertrand Russell and uh, I was reading about him recently in that Sidney Hook memoir that I was reading a couple weeks ago. So I got this used from Amazon. And so I did get a, a novel that I ordered from the... Um, I bought it from the New York Review of Books. It's this novel. I've been reading this last night and today. The Great Concert of the Night by Jonathan Buckley, a novel. So I've only read like 41 pages of this today. So, and I showed you, I got this used to the last week. The Complete Stories of James Purdy. So I got those, but, and... I showed you that Sunday, last Sunday, I went downtown to Rita's World Bookstore to get Sunday newspapers, the New York Times, and the Grand, Ra Grand Rapids Press. The Grand Rapids is a city, uh, as I mentioned this morning about Puritan Reform Theological Seminary, that's in Grand Rapids. And my wife reads the Grand Rapids Press. I like looking at the New York Times. I look at the New York Times book review. I look at, you know, different things. You, I still have two of them over on the table there. Two New York Times. I just look through them over a couple of weeks. There's so much in those. But when I was there, I showed you, I picked up uh, Opaloid. Uh, no, it's called... Opiate Indiana by Brian Allen Carr. I showed you this one. But I also picked up these two books last Sunday. Uh, I picked. I have been looking at this novel, The Parisian by Isabel Hamnan, winner of the Pimbleton Prize. I've been looking at this for oh, a while. I think it came out last year, uh, 2019. And I really wanted to read this and have it in our library. And my dream is to read this 2020. And I also picked up this half price. Uh, it was 50% off. Horizon. These are, this is a memoir, travel, adventure by Barry Lopez. Uh, his uh, nonfiction book, Arctic Dreams, is one of my favorite books by I have almost all of Barry Lopez books in our library which I have found used really cheap didn't pay any money for them I have a couple of them and I even have doubles of some of his books but this is Horizon this is his newest thing it was 50% off 
So it was like, you know, fifteen, fourteen dollars instead of thirty. So I picked those up last Sunday at the Reader's World Bookstore, which is a family owned institution there in Holland. It's been there my wife when she was a girl growing up. She used to go down to Reader's World when she was a little girl. Back then they had a soda fountain and it's, but now they sell newspapers and children's books and travel maps and all kinds of magazines and all kinds of books. It's a, it's a really nice bookstore. So I picked those up and then I got this in the mail today. Uh, this book, I came across it and I have th three other books by Orlando Figs in our library, which I have shown. I have his book, uh, The People's Tragedy, which is on the, the Russian Revolution. I have Natasha's Dance, which is on the cultural history of Russia. And I have his book on the Cry Crimean War. But I didn't have this one. I didn't know he had published this. Uh, the Europeans, Three Lives in the Making of Cosmopot Cosmopolitan Culture. So I got this in the mail today. Today, uh, this morning, I left early, I, I left late morning to go to Family Fair, a grocery store, to get some food items. I stopped at the Goodwill, and I found these books. I found this by, by Mark Adams, Meet Me in Atlantis, Across Three Continents in Search of the Legendary Sunken City. Uh, It says here, a few years ago, Mark Adams made a strange discovery. Everything we know about the legendary lost city of Atlantis comes from the work of one man, the Greek philosopher Plato. Then he made a second stranger discovery. Amateur explorers are still actively searching for this lost city all around the world, based entirely on the clues Plato left behind. Adams rakes up frequent flyer miles traveling tracking down these Atlantis obsessives, trying to determine why they believe it's possible to find the world's most famous lost city and whether any of their theories could prove or disprove its existence. He visits scientists who use cutting-edge technology to find legendary civilizations once thought to be fictional. He examines the musical and numerical, num numerical codes hidden in Plato's writings and with the help of some charismatic sleuths, traces their roots back to Plagathoris, the 6th century BC mathematician. He learns how the ancient societies passed on accounts of cataclysmic events and how one might dig out the kernel of truth in Plato's original tale. I have another book by him, uh, Turn Right at Pancho. Pico, you know that city in the, I think it's in the Andes, the ancient city in the Andes. So I, I found that at Goodwill. I found this book, uh, it was a memoir uh, by Robert A. Johnson. I don't, it's called Balancing Heaven and Earth, a memoir of visions, dreams, and re realizations. He's too into uh, Carl Jung, Jung's psycho psychology. I found a bunch of books on Young, which I had this one already in our C.H.C.J. Young collection, Memories and Dreams and Reflections by him. I picked up a book by Herman Hesse that I have read, I have several copies of in our library, and this is a book I read in high school back in 1968, and I read it a couple of years ago, a reread, and I found another copy of this. Herman Hess, The Glass Bead Game. So I found another copy of that. And then I found this really interesting book, The Young Cult Origins of a Charismatic Movement by Richard Knoll. Uh, it says here in the back, subject of international headlines and high praise upon its publication, The Young Cult marks a turning point in understanding of Carl Jung's life and theories. Using, newsy, using newly undiscovered records and documents, author Ro Richard Knoll probes the historical young, 
revealing Young's falsification of key research in the theory of collective unconsciousness, his founding of a religious style cult among his followers, and the persistence of racist and proto-fascist ideas in his work. With a new preface that con considers reaction to the book, Null crafts a lasting document that is crucial to our understanding of Young's life and thought at the turn of the century, as well as the persistence of his ideas today. Then I found this other book on Young, In Search of Young by J.C. Clark. I have, a, I've been collecting books on Young for years. When I was in high school, I was really into Young, Freud. I collect books on Sigmund Freud, psychoanalysis. I collect books on William James, you know, but, so I found these today, and I got all these for, you know, four dollars. I got all these books for four dollars. The reason why I say that is because someone commented, and people say this in my comments, how can you afford so many books? Well, I buy old used books, I, around here, I mean, I am really blessed that in this area, in Holland area, there are so many good books. Now, I know it's up to literary taste. What some of you might consider good books, you might just turn your nose up at and say, you know, that those books suck. But for me, you know, I have such a wide, wide interest. Uh, Christian books, bu uh, books on European history, books on art, books on biographies, memoirs, letters, uh, all kinds of things. And uh, so I always find something. Now sometimes I might go out and find nothing, but then I can always find something used in Amazon. I have Amazon Prime. I get really cheap for books. Uh, so yeah. Now I just showed you half of the books because I, make it, I don't want to make this a really long video. I just want to just, like I said, I have six days by myself and I'll show the rest of the used books I got last week. Most of the books I got left over to show in, a few, in my next video are books I got from the Book Nook the last couple of weeks. And I've only spent at the Book Nook, no, one pile here is from the Bibles from Mexico. And one pile is from the book nook. And I'll show those in a future video. So I just wanted to say, to show you these books, so I can put them down the lower level, get them in their, in their place down there in the, the book mountain, in the chaos. These, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna read this one. I wanna keep this one up here. I have been reading uh, Opaloid, Indiana. I do want to read The Parisian. I do want to read Horizon by Barry Lopez. I have been reading the short stories of James Purdy. I have been reading The Concert of the Night by Jonathan Buckley. These I do plan to keep up here on my to be read pile. Bertrand Russell, I just wanted a good biography. I have other biographies by Carolyn Moorhead down the lower level. So, and I do want to look at this book, uh, Meet Me in Atlantis. And I do want to look at this book on Herman Hess, The Glass Bead Game. And I do want to look at this book, The Carl Young, The Young Cult. I'm kind of curious about this. So, so I got these to look at tonight as I, uh, since I don't watch TV, I finished writing in my diary today. I'm on page 53. It is 4.51. I got, I'll probably read until 11, 11.30 tonight. Carol called from Seattle. She flew in around 11 o'clock there in Seattle. It was 3, 3 o'clock here, 3.35, something like that. So I hope you're having a good day. I hope my videos don't bore you. I just have all these books that I want to get down the lower level, get them put away, because I'm always going to thrift stores. I'm always 
collecting books. I, you know, I tell people I'm a book collector. I read all the time, but I enjoy going out and looking for books. And now, like once again, I don't. I usually I spend sixty cents for a paperback, maybe a quarter. Uh, at the book nook, a, a paperback usually costs a dollar. Hardback two dollars. Bibles to Mexico, fifty cents for a hardback, a quarter for paperback. At Goodwill, uh, paperbacks adult sixty cents. Hardbacks are ninety. Same as Bibles for Mexico. Action House, same thing. A dollar, maybe ninety cents for a hardback. Uh, sixty cents for a paperback. So I don't, I usually spend around maybe $40 a month on used books. Sometimes I spend less because I don't, in the wintertime, I don't like traveling in bad weather. So I don't go out much. Uh, at the at the book nook, I tend to spend more money. Uh, it all depends. Sometimes I'm at the book nook volunteering and I don't come across anything. And some days I do. Some days when I'm there, I do. So yeah, and I, I get books in the mail, but I don't like buying new books unless I really have to. Now, as I've said in past videos, when it comes to Christian books, like those William Perkins, those you can't buy used. But if I buy them from Dr. Beakey in Grand Rapids, he gives a certain discount, maybe a 15% 15, 15 off. And and to me, William Perkins is something that I want to read my whole life. It's something I treasure. Uh, I love the old Puritans. I don't mind spending $35 a volume because it's a good investment. Uh, so certain books, certain Christian books, like, you just can't get them. You won't find them in thrift stores. You won't find them at used book sales. And, but around here, you can get good prices for Christian books. And so I don't have a... And plus, I don't buy that many as I did when I was going to go into the gospel ministry. As you all know, I was going to be an ordained Presbyterian Calvinistic minister. I'm conservative. I'm evangelical. Uh, I love the old writers, the Puritans. Uh, I love John Calvin. I'm into... Pauline theology. I love the Apostle Paul. I love the Bible, preaching and teaching and things like that. So, but since I don't, you know, I'm just a lay person. I'm an old hermit and uh, I don't go to church anymore. And I've explained the reason why in past videos. But I love the Word of God. I love studying the Word of God. I love meditating on the Word of God. I love praying the Word of God because the Word of God is living. It's the, the Bible is just not a dead book. It's the, God reveals Himself in the pages of Holy Scripture. He speaks to us by His Spirit. He quickens the Word to our hearts and minds. That's one thing else I wanted to say before I close is that, you know, it's true that Christianity is loving God, but also it's important that we stay faithful to the teachings of Scripture. So there is such thing as doctrinal purity. There is false doctrine. There is a false religion. There is false Christianity. There is a Christianity that looks like externally, but when you look inside of it, it's all dead. It's just formalism. It's just it's civil religion. It's not biblical Christianity. But one thing that's important about biblical Christianity that it has sound doctrine, that it has that that's why it's important that we stay faithful to the confessions of the church, the you know the Nicene Creed, the Athanasian Creed. The, in in Presbyterianism, you have the Westminster Standards and the Dutch Reformed tradition. You have the Canons of Dort, the Heidelberg the Belgic Confession, things like that, which set forth the basic Christian doctrine that that sets forth what the gospel is. So those things are really important because out of sound doctrine comes a sound life. You can't, if your Christianity is false and it's distorted, 
and mixed with false teaching, your your walk will 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 suffer. Your the Christian life will be won't be as it's supposed to be. That's why uh, sound doctrine theology is important. That's why we ought to read theology works like Bavick and John Calvin and and uh, Joel R. Beakey. Why we ought to immerse ourselves in Puritan theology, Reformation theology, because they set forth what the Bible teaches. And out of that biblical teaching, out of gospel theological proclamation and teaching, it is bear fruits of a spiritual life. So it is important what we believe and what we confess, because there is there is false doctrine, there is false religion, there is uh, the lie of the devil, there is false gods, there are demonic powers, and there are things in this world that would seek to lead us astray, and that's why we need to be under sound biblical ex expository, applicatory preaching. So I wanted to bring that out because it's true that you got to, our knowledge of God should warm our hearts, give us, the more we know of God, know of God's Word, it should inflame our hearts with holy love and holiness and seek to desire and thirst for God. So I just wanted to bring that out. So I hope you're having a good Thursday. I'll close. And until next time, bye.